Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Oz. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe. Keep up to date with everything that's going on on the channel. We have a plethora of content coming up all about the draft and everything in the AFL and a variety of sports. And if you want to become a member of the channel, you can do that. Link is in the description. Do that. It really helps the channel out. A lot of work goes into our videos. But let's get into it. You've all asked for my power ranking, so... I don't often reveal this, but at the moment, there is a plethora. There's just under 150 players um, that we are correlating this year. So let's, without further ado, get into it. But what I want you to do is we're going to look at the tier system. So as you can see, this is how I roughly grade them. It's not perfect, but... It's basically my eye. So what we're doing here is we're looking at what they've done and we're also looking at historically the scope for these players to get better. So you've got five star. Obviously, they're going to be Jets. Top five on the list, four star, top 15 role players. And then your depth for projects. So that's kind of like almost a cop out. They could get to five star. Um, they could stay at one star. But basically, there is something there that suggests that if they do get picked up, there is going to be something something to work with, if you know what I mean. So late bloomers, players like that. So let's get in to the rankings. So as you can see here, you'll see here that you'll see my top 18. So this isn't necessarily how they'll go. This is more how I see it ranking in talent-wise. So you can see here that there's the three five-star recruits that we've heavily topped out. Colby McKercher, for me, is the most underrated player in this draft. An absolute jet. Jed Walter, as you can see, absolute superstar. And Harley Reid. And you can see here that the players are pretty much the top three. I mean, you would say, you would say that these players are definitely going to be in in the draft. Do you know what I mean? In and around that draft. And these are definitely going to be them type of players that will go the first three. I would be very shocked if they don't end up at, that, at, at the destination in that one to three. I'd imagine that North Melbourne have Colby McKercher. And I'd imagine a bid comes in for Jed Walter in the second and Harley Reid. So they're fairly straightforward. In at four, and a borderline five-star recruit for me is Ethan Reid. Played in the rook, played down back and forward, but is predominantly a ruckman. I think he is a really solid asset. As you can see, they have a claim to him, Gold Coast. Gold Coast have Jed Walter and Ethan Reid. And then we go into the four-star recruits. Fifth rank, Zane Dursma. We've heavily talked about him. Danny Curtin. Um, I've got him in that four-star range with Riley Sanders. Um, obviously, do you know what I mean? We know North Melbourne are heavily linked with him. Uh, Connor O'Sullivan, the key defender, um, can slide a little bit forward as well. Nick Watson, Nate Caddy, four-star recruit. Interesting. Um, Caleb Windsor, Jake Rogers, who I'm heavily a fan of, three-star recruit. People may see Jordan Croft there, four-star recruit. But I've got him ranked 16. It's mainly how long it takes them to develop. Same with Mitch Edwards. I think Mitch Edwards is a lot better tied with Fremantle. Obviously, they can't put a bid on him. And Hiley, Riley Hardman, another four-star recruit who I think will be really, really solid moving forward. But that is like the first round of picks, in my opinion, if they went into draft order. And then we come up to... 19 to 36. Now, there is some names here that you may be familiar with. Lance Collard and Colton Tholstrup, both Subiaco boys, both three-star recruits, could even be higher. But these are definitely going to be them solid players, along with Harry Di Matea. Um, massive players like Harry um, Archie Roberts. Will McCabe, key defender. He's another one tied with Hawthorne, as we know. Um, a real solid player that could be a lot higher. Uh, Luminan Lowell, um, big fan of him. We've talked about him a lot. Doggies, NGA, obviously he won't go there unless they pick him up. Charlie Edwards, um, Will Green has been heavily talked about. Um, I think he's going to be a late bloomer. 
a lot of people have got huge raps on him. He's still in here, but I still think that there is better options. I do think he'll go in that 20s to 30s range. Um, Will Graham, less talked about. We have talked about him a bit on this show, but commonly under-touted. Chu Giaf, Angus Hasty, as you can see. These guys, three-star recruits, as well as Ashton Moore. It's worth noting that Ashton was a top 10 recruit at the start of last year. Has slid down. We still really highly rate him here in the 30s. George Stevens, Phoenix Gothard, um, Ari Schoenmaker, again, Tazzy Tax. People aren't talking about him. Cone Sanchez, Jack Deline, and Joel Frazier. Um, a lot of people have talked about them. And then we go down to the next cabs off the rank. We're in our third round. You've got K Caden Cleary here, who I think is a really highly touted. You can see three-star recruit um, sliding down. We base that basically off the form and how much they're in the public eye. I think he will slide. There is rumours that he'll go, but he's definitely a player that's going to be taken higher than should be. Um, Archer Reed, absolute real solid talent here, especially if you're a key forward and you've got key forwards there and you're looking to build them up. Zane Takostelski um, at Claremont, key defender, um, 17 um, years old, WA, definitely a talent that, you know, you're going to be looking at, really. He's going to be one of them players that definitely will be in that in that bracket of people talking about him, definitely. He's one of them players that I think, when you look at him, he's got a lot of untapped potential, big, big guy, um, and a real solid player. Taylor Gold, three-star recruit, I really like him. I think his point of difference with his size are exciting. And Cooper Simpson, um, leadership real solid, got ticks in all the boxes. A player I really like, and a guy that slid because of injuries. Luca Morris, there, Jack Callahan, Billy Wilson. These players have been talked about. Do want you to look out for Will Lorenz, definitely a player. And there, the VFL guys, the senior players starting to come in. Sean Manor, um, definitely will be a great little pickup. And these are players that generally are going to be rookied or maybe taken very late. Uh, and then we've got some more players here. Um, Sam Clusey definitely will be rookied by someone maybe taken really late. Mutas Elnor, um, Bailey van der Heuvel, um, all these players here have been talked about. I do want you to look out for players like Willie Rowland, definitely Charlie McCormack, who will I reckon will be rookied by GWS Giants. He's a really solid one. And Riley Weverell, definitely a late bloomer and one that I feel by our style system. Not turning 18 till the 21st. One to really look out for there. Then we're going into... These are punts. I do want you to check out Patrick Snell. Brisbane are really good at hiding these players. Um, we talked about their academy last year. Um, players like Jasper Fletcher and stuff that no one talks about. Um, Mohamed Tahar as well um, at Calder Cannons linked with Essendon. I could see them having a late punt on him. Um, he's going to be definitely someone to watch who's got some real good skills. And just because they're one star, don't think that they're a write-off. They're just basically, they're going to need a lot of work and you ain't going to see them in the first couple of years. Then we go down to here. Um, Lachlan Cabal, one probably of no, will they pick him up on a rookie? I don't think so, but definitely may get a VFL berth. Um, some names there, though, that have been in and around. Uh, I know people have talked about Samuel Van Ruen, uh, the key forward there, uh, and Locke Rawlinson as well. Um, Locke, Lawson Humphreys, one of the mature ages, may be one of them guys that may get picked up late, particularly with um, West Coast Eagles. They may rookie him. And then we go down to here. Um, Josh Chatfield is definitely one to watch. Key defender, swing man, can go forward as well. 23 years old. And Harry Grant has been linked as well. Um, he's won a few medals as that guy as well this year. He may be someone that someone takes a punt on very late as a rookie, as a mature ager. Um, a lot of these now, we're really in rookie territory. And then we've got here, Essendon have Amin Name, uh, Calder Cannons again. Uh, Ty Gander is one player that has been talked about. And Charlie Nash. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him be rookied by Richmond. They are linked with him um, as he is tied there. Josh Docking, winger. I don't. I think he may be just unlucky with St Kilda with the fact that they have so many wings. But there is some players there. I do like Lucas Slade. Um, he might be one that, you know, mid-season draft in a year or two 
when he goes to the sandfall, which I believe he will be picked up in the sandfall there. And then we finish with these guys here, the also rans. But that is roughly my setup there. If you've got any questions, or we will be covering just about all of them um, in our little projections. We do our mini profiles. They will get a little run. But if there's anyone that you're wondering about, let me know. But that is the power rankings, really. Um, let me know. I'll if, if you pe people want to release that and that's something of interest, I can always put that so you can download it. But there they are, the Pommy Power Rankings. Let me know what you think. Any of them players take your fancy? Anyone surprise you? Let me know in the comments. We'll have a chat. Till next time, Pom out. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad